It's the Weekly Wrap with your host, broadcasting legend Bruce Wolf, and his trusty sidekick, comedian Tim Slagle. And now, without further ado, Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf. Uh, Wolf. <laughs> Can't pronounce my own name. Well, you know, I was off for Thanksgiving, so I forgot everything. Uh, Tim Slagle, <laughs> always get your name correct. Uh, on the Weekly Wrap, how you doing, Tim? Pretty good. How about yourself? Okay. Well, I know I'm guessing it's always fun. My favorite part of the show is to guess your background. And I know what you're doing. You're trying to approximate the Biden administration official who uh, stole a woman's luggage and then started (laughs) wearing her clothes. He stole her luggage from the carousel uh, at the airplane uh, at at the the Minnesota, the Minneapolis St. Paul airport. And that's uh, that's (laughs) what you're looking at behind me right now. That's the baggage handling. That's uh, you want you you want women's underwear 50 percent off. There you go. (laughs) So. Here we go. Trump has dinner with Kanye Yi uh, and Tito Puente, I, I guess. Uh, uh, it's hard for me to keep up with all these. Uh, no, I guess it's uh, <laughs> somebody Fuentes who's a white nationalist. And um, he's a Mexican white nationalist. Which, yeah, uh, right. Right. They, they used don't to make be a. <laughs> They don't make them like they used to. Uh, you know, they, you yeah, know. We're we're outsourcing everything. We're even outsourcing our white nationalists. Right. Now. Whatever happened to <laughs> was it was a Buford Pusser? Uh, no, maybe he was. That was actually a Jackie Gleason character, wasn't it? Uh, with Burt Reynolds. I, I got to make sure. You know the the good old fashioned white Southern racist. Uh, you know, yeah. a George Cor- Corley Wallace. Uh, somebody. But when you got a Mex, you know, hybrids like this, uh, it's, 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 it's really tough. But anyway, um, so well, I guess they work. I guess they work cheaper. I guess they do the white nationalism for a lot less, a lot less money. You don't have to. Might, uh, it might you be. pay them under the table. It might be. So um, yeah, this is just another thing that I mean, to me, it, it'll hurt Trump. It's just and now it's, apparently he's going to have somebody to actually be a guardian at the gate and say, oh, you really shouldn't have have dinner you know, with, with these kinds of people. But, you know, he, he's kind of stumbling out of the gate here. And yeah, that's, um, uh, that to me, it, 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 it reeks of a setup. I can't believe oh, this. Really? I, well, yeah. of course, you're the setup guy. You're the conspiracy theory guy. Yeah. And God love you for it. Uh, so you think that uh, what Carl Rove did an AstroTurf thing or what, what, what was going on? I, I have no idea. I have okay. no idea. But but Fuentes was connected with Charlottesville, which to me always, okay. always, always seemed like a setup too. It, 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 granted, the people were there. I mean, they're, right. you know, we've got we've got racists in this country. I Sure. I don't think that's a surprise. But, you know, it, it, they're not good at organizing. They need some. <laughs> The Democrats, well, anytime there's a good organization of, of, of groups like white nationalists, I, I blame the Democrats. They're, they're yeah, the all right. All right. Well, I mean, it, it's Trump just seems to like to walk into this. It's fun. And there's just so many. Different yeah. Things. Yeah. And I'm he, not I'm not saying he wasn't stupid. I mean, yeah. <laughs> OK, no, but, but he does all these things. And, you know, he's like a Captain Peter Rungway uh, peach fuzz on this. It remind and, and eventually you think it's going to get to him. There's an NFL analyst, former Bears player, Greg Olson. I, he, I I thought this was so funny. Maybe I was just punch drunk on too much football uh, over the weekend. But he said uh, in describing some uh, f- football situation, it was death by a thousand paper cuts. Now, he didn't. <laughs> when I think of death <laughs> by a thousand cuts, I think of something about a medieval torture chamber. Yeah. Uh, but he had it, it wouldn't be exactly a malapropism, but it's a. Uh, he probably thought that was the actual formulation, death by a thousand paper cuts. And he yeah, wasn't but, trying yeah, to be. But you know what? It's sometimes sometimes it's like, you know, you know, when Archie Bunker would do a malaprop, well, sure. it would be it would be, you know, it would actually mean something. Oh, no, no, no. They work. It. It's they, like those... going to California, brushing up there against fear has made your faucets. <laughs> no, no, they, 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 no, those things actually work. And I think death by a thousand paper cuts works, especially in, in a national football league where you can't even touch the quarterback any mu- anymore. So it's just, you know, a little touch here, a little <laughs> touch there. No, I get it. And well, it, to me, it sounds like a legal proceeding. Death sure. by a thousand paper. Cuts. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not arguing with it. Actually, one of my favorites of all time, I think it was Bill Granger, former uh, sometimes TV critic. He had a kid who was um, a little bit uh, uh, challenged uh, mentally, I guess. But um, and he had come up 
with happy birth cake, which actually makes a <laughs> lot of sense. So, uh, you know, so anyway, uh, but, oh, it's, and, you know, then we can play the what about ism game or uh, as I like to call it two quoke way to sound like I know something uh, in, in Latin. But, you know, you got on the left, you got to in. Ilan Omar, uh, college campuses are all left. Uh, that's my dog in the background groaning over the whole thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, the dog even said, I wouldn't yeah, even let Kanye they don't like over. that. <laughs> they don't like that. So um, and it, ju it just reminds me a little bit. I mean, we're getting into this whole anti-Semitism thing right now. And you know, I never know, you know, as a Jew, who I should be fearful more of. Is it the left or the right? You, you know, I've thrown in my my lot with the yeah, that's the dog loves this. I, I I've thrown in uh, my lot with the right because you know I always figured and that uh, especially and they're so pro Israel, uh, the evangelicals. Now eventually, you know, at the end of days, they're you know probably going to say, well, now you got to convert. Uh, but you know, I, I, I'm put, I'll put that off till tomorrow. I need my allies <laughs> right now. I mean, it's like Israel right, right now is is a uh, is allied with the Arabs. Th thank goodness for the Bar uh, Barack Obama initiative to try to get a, a nuclear treaty with Iran, which made the Arabs fearful enough to uh, align yeah. themselves with Israel. Yeah, that's I, how much I, everyone that's how much everyone hates Iran. And, <laughs> right. Uh, go U.S. Go U.S. T. Soccer. Oh, team. my God. You know, it's I didn't know who to root for. And that but we'll talk about that later, because I, I guess the Iranians, you know, that they, they were uh, under duress singing their own national anthem. But um, speaking of sports and anti-Semitism, uh, so LeBron James it, it got really upset because I don't know how much you follow the NBA and I don't follow it at all anymore. But he That's was basketball, up, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, men's it, men's basketball. Yeah, men's basketball. Okay. Um, 10 foot rim and. Uh, he he was saying, oh, you know, you, you guys keep bothering me about this guy, Kyrie Irving. Just a short lesson on Kyrie Irving. He's a big star player in the NBA. Uh, a few years ago, he posited the theory that the earth was flat. I don't think he's ever really gone back on that. <laughs> he, he says <laughs> he's, he advised everybody to do their own research on it. Uh, and I, I kid you not. But he engaged in you know Holocaust denial and everything like that. And he was. And he's like a semi apologized 15 times. And uh, the NBA is kind of destroying him by a thousand paper cuts. But um, <laughs> but but um, LeBron was tired of getting asked about it. And so he says, hey, nobody asks me about Jerry Jones. Well, Jerry Jones is the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. OK. And in 1957, when he was 14 years old. OK, this is even better than Brett Kavanaugh dry humping somebody when he, allegedly when he, he was in high school. Um, and, and for you kids out there, you should never do that. And I shouldn't even use that term. It's uh, it's, it's <laughs> not even nice. I, I, I mean, maybe in Revenge of the Nerds, which everybody loved 40 years ago, that movie, it was OK to use it, but it isn't now. Anyway, Jerry Jones when he was 14, apparently stood with a bunch of other uh, fellow white students and, tr and tried to block black students from entering the school and may have even pushed some of these students down the stairs. But it was in 1957 and he was 14. And of course, this was all linked to a story that says that Jerry Jones, as the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, has never had a black head coach. So somehow you can <laughs> bootstrap that onto uh uh, that's yeah. That says as he as he pushed them down the stairs. That's uh, what he was. That's what he yeah, was saying. Yeah. So uh, and you'll never coach my team. Yeah. Actually, what's interesting is in the picture that we're looking at now. If if you watch this, he's kind of in the background, and it almost and the guy in the center of it who was facing off against the black guy has a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> It looks like it. I mean, it looks like the Jets and the Sharks, uh, but I mean, it's not <laughs> not to mention funny. not to mention that 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 news camera there. Oh, that, right. Uh, I mean, that that looks like every uh, look, 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 looks like every stereotypical uh, <laughs> movie set in the movies. No, no. I mean, it's there's no question. I mean, that uh, William Randolph Hearst used that uh, with RK or uh, uh, who, who was it? Uh, Orson Welles used that, you know, for. Uh, for the uh for his classic uh, the and actually um, actually he looks like he, uh, the look on his face is uh hey i'm going to be late to math <laughs> no but i mean and, and it's, it's it's yeah it's it's 
it's not a good situation. It was 1957, though, and so that's what they're and 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 LeBron was trying to bring that up. We should talk about 1957 as opposed to Kyrie Irving just yesterday or continuing to uh, uh, voice uh, Kanye like uh, sentiments. So, um, in, in any event, th- this whole thing is it's getting. Um, it, it, it's all uh, going back to Trump and it, it's it, it's going to hurt him, this kind of association. I note that um, Jonah Goldberg, whom I like and I, I actually subscribe to the dispatch and you should, too, uh, nonetheless, writes that Kevin McCarthy, the House, uh, the uh, would be House speaker, uh, needs Trump and the Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene types because he helped whittle down the party to such an extent that he thinks he can't afford to lose them. And he's probably right. Um, and, and Jonah says that he and his ilk seven years ago, uh, it was obvious to them that the path that the right was going down would ultimately lead to a dead end, which is where he believes McCarthy is at. I, I would say the only problem with um, what he's what Jonah is saying is that I think the party started whittling itself down before seven years ago. That's why we had to have Trump, because we didn't want another Romney again, who's going to lose in a, in a, uh, yeah. a gentlemanly type fashion. So, uh, I mean, so that's the problem there. Uh, but that we may wind up with yet another Trump. Uh, and you've said this before, too. I mean, Trump could squeak through in the primaries and uh, and then we're setting ourselves up for yet another another Biden uh, uh, term. <laughs> am I right about this or am I wrong? Is, is this where, I don't, where we're I don't think there could be another Biden term. I think it's uh, if he makes it, if he makes it for the next two years, I'll be shocked. The, the Democrats uh, will be embarrassed enough to invoke the 25th Amendment when he sh- shakes hands with yet another phantom on the stage. Uh, what, what's going to happen? I, I, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I said, what is. Yeah. Kamala Harris is one silver alert away from the Oval <laughs> Office. That's interesting. We should do uh, ne- next segment. We'll, we'll try to figure out the, the over under the date that Biden uh, ends his term. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Well, a number of protests have now taken place in Chinese cities. There have been demonstrations in Urumqi in Xinjiang province where 10 people died in an apartment fire reportedly because emergency services there were hindered by COVID lockdown procedures. Well, gatherings have also taken place across Beijing, including in the city's one of its biggest universities where people sang the national anthem in solidarity. Protests last night in Wuhan as well, where coronavirus first broke out, was first reported anyway, reports of people pushing down police barricades. And police have used pepper spray on demonstrators. In Shanghai, people have been detained by police and protesters were taken away in vans and buses today. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And uh, Tim... Boy, it looked like an insurrection. <laughs> they know how to handle insurrections. Uh, <laughs> one little tank in Tiananmen Square. Um, I, I feel guilty, though, because, you know, I got my iPhone attached to my right ventricle, my iPad attached to my left ventricle. And um, I mean, Apple does not look too good in this. They're helping to quell the protests. Uh, I, I don't know. Ex- you're uh, more familiar with this newfangled stuff, um, but Apple, yeah, Apple's it's air, doing it's, something it's, to to it's stop air, the- It's AirDrop. What oh, okay. AirDrop is, it's an easy way to share. Like if you take a picture and say, "Oh, I I want a copy of that picture." If I, you and I do a selfie, and you yeah. say, "Hey, Tim, I I really want a copy of that." Well, what you can do is you can turn on your phone and I can airdrop it to you. I can send it to you instantaneously. Oh, okay. You can do that with like almost any file that you have on your phone. You can say share from phone to phone. Uh, I use it. I use it when I post videos on YouTube. I take the video with my phone and then and then transfer it to my computer via airdrop. Well, what the uh, what the ingenious Chinese people have done is they have figured out that that airdrop makes a really nice alternate internet ah there you go because if we want to show five we want to show tiananmen square tanks which you're not allowed to see in china i can share it with my neighbor that he can share it with the guy in the house next door to him and 
the next thing you know, it goes all the way across the country from phone to phone, uh, oblivious to the government who's watching the Internet. It's, right. Uh, it's done by Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Right. It's, but Apple, uh, they, they put the clamps on that. Well, and, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, who's going to make the iPhone 14 if they're out <laughs> protesting? <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, and, and but we're all in this because I think, as I recall, you you need tool and die makers to to make these cell phones. And there's about a dozen of them in the United States, whereas in China, I think these guys are like in barracks and they they work around the clock and they live <laughs> there. And uh, so come on. Um, <laughs> let's, let's get real about this. So, but, but, but it's interesting because, you know, you've got, as, as somebody has pointed out, you've got Apple, it's a private company, so they can do whatever they want. Oh, really? Okay. They can help, you know, mm -hmm. Aiden abet the, the enemy, uh, sure. that, you know, it's like privately, step, just as long step, as it's private. Yeah. Just one step away from invading Taiwan and, you know, upsetting the entire, uh, uh, uh geopolitical balance. Um, but on the other hand, you got to have the White House watching Twitter, a private company. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it seems a little asymmetrical there. And well, um, you know that the that the seditionists all use the Twitter to, to, <laughs> or, to like like an airdrop. They use that uh, to, to communicate with, with each other. It was a, like it a, was a well-coordinated attack uh, attack. And that's why Donald Trump. Uh, uh, never left office. Uh, well, I, I, well, well coordinated. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Get to that in a second. But but it, just, just one more point. You know, Andy McCarthy, who's not one of these, you know, nutcases, uh, you know, he writes for National Review, but he's, you know, pretty, pretty sober about all this. And he certainly doesn't buy into conspiracy theories. But even he is writing right now that you know, you really got to look into how much Biden, the Biden family has benefited from its dealings with China. Because um, the the administration doesn't seem to be going as hard on China as as it otherwise would, and um, well, and no, that, it's yeah. bad for Hunter's business. <laughs> right. Well, so I mean, it's something worth. But uh, now that now that you uh, alluded to the Oath Keepers, um, that was an, an interesting. Uh, it, it, you know, they got the headline. Oh, a couple of guys uh, convicted of uh, sedition. But it there wasn't really all the uh, as as Gertrude Stein said of Oakland a lot of there there uh, because um, it, it's, they were acquitted uh, uh, several of them on, uh, on 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 some charges and their whole argument was that Trump didn't have anything to do with this <laughs> because they wanted to get these guys now uh -huh. I'm I'm not, no no uh, legal uh, not a criminal uh, law legal expert. Um, but I'm just wondering, you know, if they ever did indict Trump uh, for his part in January 6th, could Trump's lawyers then say, well, well, wait a minute here, government, you just argued in the Oath Keepers trial, basically, that Trump didn't have a, <laughs> very much to do with all this. So you could try to convict the Oath Keepers. Um, I don't think you, you, you get to. Uh, you get to do that against the government. They're they're allowed uh, all this uh, pleading in the alternative, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, it is, yeah. It is Ignore kind of any evidence from previous trials. I mean, that's uh, that's going to be <laughs> right. the, to the jury's instructions. Yeah. So 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 there you go. Um, we would be remiss if we did not mention that uh, one of your favorites, Mike Lindell, uh, is he still running for the RNC chair or is that just a joke? I mean, it may be a joke anyway, but um, my RNC, that's what it's going to be a brand new <laughs> right. RNC. It's my RNC, the most comfortable Republican <laughs> National Committee. Oh, yeah. That you yeah. ever experienced. Yeah, right. And now they got a special deal where you can get two go anywhere RNCs for the price <laughs> of one. And the thing about when I was doing all those reads on the radio for, for the my pillow, it's like they always had that special deal. I mean, if you always have it, it's not a special deal. But nonetheless, um. Sure, sure. Um, it's like uh, it's like the idiot who paid full price at Kohl's. <laughs> so, um, so did you actually have a my pillow? Did you actually use? Oh, it? I, oh, oh, yeah. Well, here's I actually talked to Mike Lindell, and this is before he was very big, because I was doing the radio show with Dan Proft on WLS, and we had a conference call with him, yeah. and he was so his enthusiasm was so infectious. I mean, he could have sold me anything. 
you know, he could have you know sold me snake so you're oil. Lucky he was, he was just lucky. Lucky he was just selling pillows at no, that right? time. No, but I, you, I, I, you I might totally have been there. You might have been there on January sixth. Look, I, <laughs> I, I with an AR-15. You know, none of these unarmed <laughs> insurrectionists. I mean, if you're gonna have an insurrection, have a gun with you. Um, but uh, no, he was so believable. You knew that he believed in in what he said, and I I firmly believe that he. You know, he, he's not a snake oil, oil salesman because he really believes in all and everything that he has said. It was kind of funny because remember when he was on Jimmy Kimmel's show um, and mm -hmm. he actually acquitted himself rather well. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Kimmel it was. I, I was surprised. I, yeah. I, I was surprised. Kimmel yeah. really thought that they were good. He's going to make a fool out of me. No, no, no. But himself. here's the thing. Kimmel liked him. And they even did a bit where one of the Kimmel's, you know, stooges came out and did a pretty, a pretty funny thing where, and they were making fun of Lindell. And the thing is, is he kind of, he liked it. It was kind of <laughs> funny to him and he was very self-deprecating. Now, I don't know if I can wrap my head around the concept of a guy being self-deprecating and a lunatic, because if you're self-deprecating, you can't be crazy. It, it reminded me a little bit of when Rod Blagojevich was on Letterman. And Rod didn't realize that the joke was on him. And Letterman was like, Rod, do you realize that? I mean, you're going down up the river. And <laughs> and, and, and and Rod was just like thrilled to be on Letterman and joking around. And, but you he was the butt of the joke. I I, I don't That's anyway. Literally, thought, that is literally the catch 22, isn't it? Is yeah, that you so. can't be insane if you <laughs> right. think you're insane. Totally. So that's why <laughs> that's why I believe that. Those voting machines, the Dominion voting machines were rigged. They have to be because Mike Lindell is self-deprecating. No, I got to anyway. ask you. I got to ask you, though. So, OK, now I remember the ads of those times. They would have the hosts talk about the pillow that they yeah. had my yeah. as yeah. if it was yeah. my pillow. So, yeah. so yeah. You, he gave you one. You you got. Yeah, no, my we got my pillows and we were able. I I have never. Uh, well, I, I have actually have advertised things I didn't necessarily believe in, but I drew the line at bee pollen. OK, <laughs> because they once came up to me and they said, OK, can you do this? And I said, I Googled bee pollen. And the first thing it says is it has no therapeutic effect. whatsoever. I said, anybody's going to Google this. They're going to see I, I can't do the bee pollen thing. And I don't want to say there's a causal nexus here. But three months later, I was out. So uh, <laughs> but I, you know what? The my pillows that'll fine. teach you not to not to flood swarm with the rest of the hive. Right. right. Well, actually, and I, I was listening to the commentary podcast the other day and John Pat Horitz, whom I respect quite a bit, was, you know, going insane over Mike Lindell. And then he said, and his crappy pillow. And that, so I then tweeted, look, I think Lindell's a lunatic too, but are you going to call me a, my, uh, a my pillow whore? Because I, I, the pillow's fine. I mean, did you, you liked it? You liked it was the best sleep, I, best sleep you ever had. I Look, I don't think it's cool on the other side, you know, as no, Stuart Scott one, used to, you no, always, that, that one was a disappointment for me as well. Right. That it really wasn't cool on the other side. But uh, <laughs> no. So, I mean, in, in a nutshell, you're not you didn't you're not taking his uh, bid for the RNC chair seriously, are you? I, I don't know. I, I, I if, <laughs> you if, have if an I open say, if I were to say that the Republicans haven't surprised me at all in the past six years, I would be a liar. There you go. There you go. I mean, hey, more ups and downs. And we've lost in 18 and 20 and 22 and maybe with Trump again in 24. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Welcome back to Red and Blue. I'm Scott McFarland. The defeated Republican candidate for governor in Arizona is refusing to concede. Carrie Lake called the election, quote, a debacle. In a video posted to Twitter this week, the defeated candidate said last week she's assembling lawyers as she considers her next move. Lake, who spread false claims about the 2020 election, lost the tight race to Democrat and Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs on November 8th. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And so do you think Carrie Lake was robbed, Tim? You know, hang, hang on just a second. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you're putting your tin foil. <laughs> it's funny because I'm getting reception in my teeth now from you, which is <laughs> really good. And I think I need a, a filling.
work then. Yes, I think she was robbed. Oh, okay. I think uh, I think the door between the door between box number three and the counted ballots, they admit that that was not uh, that 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 door might have gotten loose somehow. And uh, that that se- up, up to 17,000 ballots might have been gone uncounted because of now, it's that. interesting that you mentioned the number 17,000, because I think that's the number that she. But here's a picture of her. And yes. You know, just looking at her, I got to think, you know, she was robbed, you know, <laughs> it's not easily because, you know, I'm a conservative Republican and we are wowed by, you know, beauty and celebrity because uh, uh, the absolutely. Democrats have all of it and uh, they got Hollywood and, we, you know, we got Carrie Lake. So um, you, you, well, actually because- it was 12,000. So, I mean, it wasn't if 17,000 ballots. I mean, I mean, it should have at least required a, a recount. There Here, should have at the least thing. been a she, recount. She actually lost by more than 17,000. It was, but that was the number 17,000, which, and there's, you know, a lot closer margins that don't result in recounts. I, I will take uh, your uh, Monty Hall uh, formulation about door number three uh, in uh, under advisement. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, you know, she could have won that thing fair and square. But um, anyway, we've, we've, we've gone over that. Um, hey, we, we missed this from last, last segment. What do you think of the disrespect for marriage act uh, <laughs> that was passed by the Senate? Uh, <laughs> and you can either keep the tinfoil hat on or take it off at, at your, at your whim. I, I, there yeah, we go. I, there we go. Enough of that gag. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I am a lawyer, but, yeah, I'm not that familiar with with that branch of the law. It's it just it it seems a little confusing to me as to whether there is actually going to be a protection uh, for uh, traditional marriage. I know that there's language in the bill that's it, it, it sounds like, hey, it's OK if you're heterosexual. <laughs> it's okay well thank you i mean that's that's so nice of you uh, also yeah. it's um, not your fault you're white no 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 <laughs> and it's okay and as a matter of fact if you want if uh, the uh obergefell case is overturned the uh supreme court the case that legalized same-sex marriage if that's overturned for some reason and nobody actually thinks it's going to because, you know, you have to wait 50 years in order to do something like that. I mean, Clarence Thomas got the ball rolling with his concurring opinion in the Dobbs abortion case. I, I grant you that. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's at least five decades away. But OK, fine. If they overturned Obergefell, and then you would have uh, the states would have the right to make uh, gay marriage illegal again. However, according to this uh law it's actually it's actually same sex marriage it's not it's not gay marriage you can't because if it's be, be, yeah if you if you say that it's you know that it's that it's just that there's no state test for gayness right okay. <laughs> i think it's same sex marriage because if <laughs> right. you say you have to be gay to marry another man then you're discriminating against straight men who want to marry another man right and we've seen that uh all along uh <laughs> well yeah. you know it's a well, right. I mean, well, in the description of monkeypox it was uh re- remember that was always about <laughs> it, it, it's it's men who have sex with men yeah uh, exactly isn't they it, said it, it they're not there's no, it's not always it's not always not gay, gay is it <laughs> no they're, they're not they're not gay at all i remind you what was that on un- <laughs> we've, we've talked about this before we can't even go there the onion headline uh you know oh why, yeah, yeah. Why are- <laughs> i wish men would stop trying to have sex with me <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> you know you you go to a bathhouse and what what's, the what's next happening? thing you know the yeah. next thing you know so anyway, as I was trying to make this legal point until you so rudely erupted with no, uh, no, I'm sorry. It's just comic it's not relief. gay marriage. It's same. It's same sex marriage. No, okay. it, it, it's it's yeah, absolutely. But as far as uh, it goes, the states would be allowed to make same sex marriage illegal. However, they would have to recognize marriages that were uh, performed in other states. So then they would have that. That's a way of. Make saying that you you can't you can't yeah, make kind of kind of like abortion you kind of have to recognize right. that someone yep. got an abortion <laughs> in another state right no I and mean, you probably could 
you know, you could have the Underground Railroad going from uh, Mississippi uh, to, to Illinois where, you know, people could come up here and uh, and, and get their uh, abortions and uh, and and, and uh, be married to somebody of the same sex, even though, of course, why would you how would you be able to get an abortion if you were married to somebody of the same sex? But I'm, I'm <laughs> now I'm confusing myself in my own eight dimensional game of chess. Um, well, while we're talking about it, this is an entire strict left turn there. You, you won't be and I think, what is it, 2030 in California, you won't be able to buy a gasoline car, a new gasoline car. I think it's 2030. <laughs> is it, so so what's going to happen is there's going to be dealers up and down the oh, Nevada, sure. California border, <laughs> driving them across and then selling them as used. Yeah, I mean, you'll be able to get you'll, you'll get the the car fireworks uh guns <laughs> what, whatever uh oh my goodness yeah i it, you, do you honestly think that is going to go into effect the electric it, car it, thing it, it, yeah the in california i mean you know california I, it, it's much like the republicans they've they've, they've never ceased to, to surprise me it's uh i i could totally see it yeah you know i mean california la Almost married, uh, married, almost elected a <laughs> really basically a re Republican for mayor. I mean, because people were so upset. Yeah, it's it's I mean, th there's a certain, you know, a lot of seats, a lot of a lot of seats turned in California. A lot. No, of, right. Uh, it was California, New York that helped the Republicans get their the yeah, emerging you, Republican majority in the House. You know why? Is because they didn't think they had to cheat there. Oh wait, here, <laughs> okay, here, there here, you go. Get another another. Piece. I'm just saying, <laughs> it, it might be this critical mass moment that you know, they don't really. And I, boy, I, I'd be I'd be surprised. But yeah, you're, you're, you're we've we've seen things like that before. Uh hey, speaking of being surprised, I I found myself even though I wasn't watching because I mean, how could you watch soccer? I. Uh, well, found myself almost rooting for the Iranian uh, soccer team against the United States because, A, I don't believe people in the United States should root for soccer <laughs> at all, you know, unless you're watching Ted Lasso on Apple TV. But um, so that, there was that. It's essentially a girl's sport, isn't it, here in the United States? You know, I one of my daughters played soccer, you know, and that's the there sport you that you put your daughters into. But she would be running around and fixing her hair at the same time. Now, granted, <laughs> what else are you going to do with your hands uh, in, in soccer? It's not like you're going to throw a forward pass or launch a two hand set shot or something. So yeah, you may as well or, be or signal or signal to the pitcher. Yeah, you, you may as well be making sure that your hair goes behind your ears as you're running around. Um, but so I don't I don't believe I think it's un-American for for us to play soccer. And I remember when Lee Stern, uh, the owner of the Chicago Sting, was on like some high school football uh, broadcast I was doing in the 1970s. And he said, soccer is going to be the game of the 80s. Uh, and it was like a Soviet five year plans. And then the 80s, it became the sport of the 90s and whatever. But so they I tried to do that with high light, too, didn't they? <laughs> so I, I, I was rooting for that reason, for the Iranians, but also because uh, under duress, they were forced to sing their own national anthem. So, um, but then the U.S. Yeah. went ahead and went, yeah, ask won Brittany that game. Grimes about that, huh? No. Oh, <laughs> 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 so, and I actually, have you watched any of this World Cup? Uh, no. I confess that I downloaded because I was bored um, over the Thanksgiving weekend. I downloaded the um, Fox Sports app. And um, kudos to me for being able to do that. Uh, so facile, uh, you know, you know about these airdrops and everything, but I know how to download an app. And I will I uh, watched the last three minutes of the United States and England. And of course. And it was really thrilling to be watching on my phone, a live broadcast. But of course, nothing was happening and you didn't even know when the game was over. <laughs> I, I <love> <laughs> There isn't a horn. Is there a horn that goes off or whatever? Um, no, they just walk off the field. Yeah, I. That was all part of this weekend that I go had. to their go into their go into their parents' minivan. <laughs> right. Now you're not a turn big on their phone. You're not a big football fan, right? I mean, real football. I watch you know? more football than I watch soccer. Okay, let's put it. I that mean, way. 
on Thanksgiving Day, I watch nine hours of football. Okay. Wow. And then another like eight on Sunday. And it was it it was just absolutely ridiculous. I I'm 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 ashamed of myself. And the turkey that we had was it was brought in, but I gotta confess, I'm such a Philistine. The best turkey that I've had for Thanksgiving in recent years was during the pandemic. We actually went to Denny's and brought it home. And I don't know, <laughs> it had a ton of salt on it. You threw the gravy and the mashed potatoes on it, and it was fine. I got a feeling you like a different kind of turkey, though. Uh, I, li- I, I, I like turkey. I, I, oh, you um, like it? Yeah. It's. Uh, I was actually watching somebody who played the last scene of Broadway, Danny Rose. And there's a and Woody ah. Allen's Woody Allen's handing out frozen TV dinners. There's a frozen turkey. <laughs> it's just it's just as good as the other turkey, I think. There you go. There you go. <laughs> didn't think I had. I didn't have Broadway Danny Rose on my uh, weekly rap bingo card uh, today. But, uh, <laughs> Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly rap. Of course I understand you. (laughs) Dad? Dad? Grandpa? I'm a grandpa. What is this place? The cliffs are alive. And the waters dissolve the flesh off your bones. Everything down here is trying to kill us. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And, uh, you know, I like seeing that movie Strange World Bomb just as much as anyone else. But I got to give them a couple of excuses here. Okay, Tim. Um, For one... Apparently, it wasn't marketed very well. For two, it really wasn't a good story, supposedly. Um, so all I all I know about it is that uh, the, there's a gay couple in it. Yeah, that's that's all. That's yeah. all I know right. about it. No, so I I actually Googled it during the break, and I I, I guess it's right. a science fiction film. Yeah, yeah, it's um, no, it's going the way of that late. Uh, Buzz Lightyear uh, movie. And he's also gay, isn't he? Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so th- and then of course you know that Bob Iger was brought back. I don't know how much you care about Disney stuff, but Bob Iger was brought back to head up Disney, and a lot of conservatives are saying, "Oh, this shows that wokeness is defeated because this guy before him, Chapik, was the one who got into all the trouble with DeSantis." But I. Th- he was a, he was a local guy. Did you know that he's from Hammond, Indiana? Who? JPEG. JPEG. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Actually, though, it seems like Chapek was trying to backpedal from all that. And a lot of the employees and, you know, we live in the era right now where, you know, the employees, the inmates run the asylum and from sure. the Chicago Teachers Union to, you know, to uh, the railroad the, union, railroad, <laughs> big, big tech and everything. Um so it 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 seems like um, Iger is be, is being brought back to placate the the workers because Iger was all over the woke stuff when when he was there. So you know I wouldn't read into this that this is the defeat of wokeism. I I think it's it's just trying to make the employees happy and um, and of course Disney has been losing. <laughs> I guess Disney Plus isn't doing all that well either, but. You know, I, I don't. And then, of course, it's always the, it's always puzzled me. It's always puzzled yeah. me when you when you look at the amount of work it takes to do a Pixar film like Strange yeah. World. It, it, it's that all the hours of people over desks and working and creating these characters and moving them a, a fraction of an inch. At, you know, right. Uh, uh, at, at some point, you think they would say, you know, this is really awful. <laughs> <laughs> It's I don't they, haven't they computerized that now so that they can get the next movement? You you don't have to have one artist drawing every millisecond of this. No, no, but 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 I mean it's still it's still right. it's still labor intensive. I mean, no, it's not, I understand. No, it's not like it's not like the old days where every cell 
every frame was drawn yeah. from scratch. It's not like that, no, but right. it's still, it's still a lot of work. And you think, you think at some point, are you, would are say, you going to uh, try to organize the Disney uh, animators? <laughs> I, uh, what is it? You Tommy? So, so there's, um, no, but look at the credits list. There's hundreds and oh, hundreds right. of people working on these animations. And no one no. said, uh, you know, this movie sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> it really? Uh, it's a stinker. Yeah. Remember with those little flip books that you'd, you'd have where you could just oh, yeah. flip the pages and it looked like animation to you? Oh, I was in. I, I took a class in film and I tried to make a cartoon. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. And several weeks later, I had a 10 second cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Would you describe it for us in great detail? What happened at 1.2 seconds? Uh, uh, the uh, the the astronaut was halfway down the rocket, the ladder on the rocket at that point. And then, of course, by 1.8 seconds, you already had him splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. And somebody <laughs> said, no, 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 no. This can't happen in five tenths of a second. But I, my hands are tired. Yeah. I uh, want this to end. Already. Yeah, I ended up getting some fishing line and just swinging <laughs> it towards the, the, the paper moon. Uh, oh, thank goodness I could never draw. So I never even had, <laughs> never was even tempted to try to do that. So speaking of, uh, you know, things happening to Disney. I guess a, a lot of, of characters are, are getting into the public domain. So there was this gory slasher of uh, Winnie the Pooh uh, uh, movie, apparently, which I, yeah. I did not see. Although I remember reading Winnie the Pooh to uh, my kids and I loved A.A. A. Milne because he basically hated children and he um, portrayed kids as being ridiculous, uh, <laughs> which was kind of funny. So it was. You know, as an adult, at the end of the day, you're reading this to your kids and they're enjoying it on one level and you're you're getting the sarcasm on the on the next level. Um, but now they've got Bambi as a vicious killing machine that <laughs> lurks in the wilderness. Um, you know, I nothing, well, nothing, nothing wrong with you, Bambi's you, revenge, I guess. You, yeah, you uh, killed my mom. Yeah. It's, right. Uh, how many? You know, it, it, it's uh, that's that's a revenge a long time coming. I, 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 I wanted that hunter. I wanted that hunter to pay for his crime 50 years you know, ago. I'm no animator, but I would love to see Bambi at the end of this movie, you know, uh, avenging his uh, mother's death. You know, on, on on top of some towering inferno, going top of the world, ma, top of the world. Uh, you know, a they're little mashup a, there. They're doing that to a lot of stuff. I think it, I think the whole trend started with Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Killer. Sure, I don't know if yeah. you remember that, but uh, yeah, but they, yeah. They, they, there was a, there was a movie came out a couple of years ago where the banana splits were serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, I. I don't know. In my dote, I, I think I would have enjoyed stuff like that about 40 years ago uh, in my <laughs> dotage. I like talking about it with you. I don't really want to see any of no. it. Uh, no. I, now, no. speaking of which, what should I be watching right now, uh, Tim? Because my wife and I are, uh, are really trying to figure out. Uh, we just watched the John Hamm version of Fletch. Which uh -huh. was actually cute. Did you, did you ever see Chevy Chase in it? You know, 30... I, I never I never saw Fletch. Okay. And uh, it was I saw cute. that there is a John Hamm version, uh, so yeah. I might actually I might actually watch it. No, it... I uh, I really enjoyed. I've only I'm only one episode in, but I really enjoyed Wednesday on Netflix. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. I really did. Very... That's the one they're selling, and I kind of you know Tim Burton. It was like, you know what I I I'm still upset what he did with Batman because to me it was Adam West, and I loved it when Family Guy brought Adam West back as the mayor of the town because that's you know restore him to films his rightful never makes, place. Tim Burton films never really make sense, but they're always just just gorgeous to look at. It, yeah, it, I mean it was pretty to look at, but it was like oh no, this isn't Batman to me. And I went went and you know I'm sure I'm going to think Wednesday. I want that I'm umbrella. Think of the original Adams Family with the you know. Uh, oh no! It, well, it's actually the original Adams family. It's it's like the 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 the, the drawing that, that Charles Adams did. Oh, and a lot uh, of people were upset because uh, Gomez right. is not the, the the dashing, handsome character he sure. was portrayed in the other movies. It's he looks like the original Gomez. <laughs> All it's, right, uh, it's it's a possibility. very it's very funny. She's very sarcastic. Oh, very, Wednesday. Okay. Oh All right. yeah. It just uh, right. just it was. I I found it delightful. I don't know if it will carry for the whole series. 
it it, it, it seems like it's like all the jokes might have been used up in the premiere. But oh, uh, so you I, just watched one episode? You haven't watched the entire season? I'm I'm just one in. All right, just... all right, that's a possibility there. I got to tell you, I need something because I f- actually fell asleep during the Bears game on Sunday. It's the first time this year I've fallen asleep <laughs> during a Bears game, and you know, kudos to them because or know, Cujo's, I mean, huh? Cujo's Cujo's as uh, I would say, Michael Jordan would say, uh, <laughs> which I think he did say, I don't want to think that's apocryphal. I think he did say it. Um, also, you know, we were talking about Thanksgiving day on Thanksgiving. They had every network. You know, there were three networks that did games and each one of them did a tribute to John Madden because Thanksgiving was synonymous with John Madden giving out these awards and feeding everybody Turkey or the, famous turducken, which is turkey, a duck, and a chicken. And everyone did a tribute to him. And, of course, they had to overlap a little bit, uh, and it was a little bit redundant. And, uh, um, you know, and I don't mind them. They they said they're going to do this in in perpetuity, uh, uh, honor John Madden uh, on Thanksgiving. And my, my opinion is, you know what? If you do it on Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving alone, that's fine. I can live with it just as long as we don't have to hear about him <laughs> at any time the rest of the year. Now, I'm a little bit biased against John Madden because and I thought he was a great analyst and I enjoyed him and his booming and doinking. But I actually interviewed him at his home in like uh, uh, when was that uh, number of years ago It was for Fox last century. So it was last century. It was like uh, in 93 or something like that. And um I interviewed him at, at his home and he was nice enough and everything. But at one point he showed me a drawing that some little old woman from Chicago whom he thought was famous was, you know, uh, and, and very colorful. And he said, and you know, this woman, and I said, you know, I really don't. And he, he goes, <laughs> what are you talking about? Boom, doink, you're out of here. I mean, you know, I, I got to know about this. And I'm thinking to myself, listen, buddy, I know Chicago, you know, Fullerton, 2400 North. You know, Fullerton change for the Ravens. What? You know, I know all the street numbers. <laughs> Forty eight hundred is uh, Lawrence. Forty four hundred is Montrose. Don't tell me I don't know Chicago because, you know, one woman and that, you know, signifies Chicago to you. You know, so I'm a little bit biased against John Madden. I wonder but, how uh, much he paid for that drawing. No, I, I, I can't even remember who the woman was. I'm sure it was colorful. I'm sure it was right. Uh, but, uh, you yeah, know, it, it sounds to me. It sounds to me like an art dealer ripped them off. <laughs> and you <laughs> you kind of, I, I got to tell you one thing. It. And, and I want to, you know, th- I'm a little bit proud of this. Um, I did actually go outside, you know, at one point, did karaoke the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Okay. And, you know, sure, I'm singing Black Wednesday. Uh, I'm singing <laughs> Plush by Stone Temple Pilots because I'm one of, you know, those hip guys who can sure. sing a song from 30 years ago. And I'm singing it. And, you know, it's at this restaurant, which has a bunch of TVs on it, including one with all the lyrics. But there's an instrumental part of the song. So during the instrumental part of the song, I turned to another TV where the Blackhawk game was on. And I announced the Blackhawk game <laughs> in the middle of plush. <laughs> oh, when the dogs begin to smell her. And there's a shot to go. I mean, it was <laughs> it was I, I'm telling you, Tim, I could open for you. Uh, just think about it. I could open for you with my karaoke combo, karaoke and um, and uh, hockey announcing. It, it's a thought. It's a thought for, for yeah, put in your in put it in your tinfoil hat for next week. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tim. Bruce oh, Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And that's the weekly wrap on radio and television. Follow Bruce at Bruce Wolf Shy on Twitter and Tim at TimSlagle.com. The weekly wrap with Bruce Wolf, a CP Pods production. Copyright 2022.